All right, so I've scanned back out, and I'm going to show you what the uh, how important that structure is. And we're going to start with the sugar here. So our sugar has this oxygen that's typically drawn at the top, and then we have bonds to carbons. And then those carbons, okay, are basically at the corners. So a lot of times you'll see this drawn um, with the oxygen here, and then just a pentagram kind of shape that goes with it and so that every one of these corners is where a carbon is located. That's how we typically draw organics. Now remember that it is a five carbon sugar and I only have four drawn here. This uh, sugar has like a little tail to it. Now the other piece that you need to understand is is that there's hydrogen and oxygens that are bonded to these carbons. Remember carbon can make four bonds and so if this was deoxyribose, we would have a hydrogen here, and we'd have a hydrogen here. We would have a hydroxide, and then another hydrogen. And then we would have uh, hydrogen and oxygen and so on on around. And I don't want to fill all those in uh, just simply because it's going to make the drawing a little cluttered. So let me redraw this thing on the other side, and uh, so we can go through and, and do the parts that we need to here. So here's my... Uh, sugar, and I'm going to go ahead and keep the carbons in. It's important for you to see this. I just have not drawn in the hydroxyls and the uh, hydrogens, which at this point really don't matter. Now, in the, uh, or at least as far as this, what we're going to be talking about. Now, in this particular uh, sugar here, we've got our, our pento sugar here. The carbons are numbered. This is carbon number one, this is number two. This is carbon number three, this is carbon number four, and this is carbon number five. Now this is going to be important because the structure of a nucleotide, how it's actually put together, and then the sequence that this, these subunits, these nucleotides are put together in the DNA, is what gives the code that we need for a, um, for, um, a, a DNA strand, for that recipe that makes whatever protein it is. So it's real important that we have uh, some very precise structure. So on carbon number one, we will always have in a nucleotide, within the nucleotide, on carbon number one, you're always going to have that nitrogenous base. So if it's DNA, it's going to be guanine, adenine, um, thymine, cytosine, it's going to be one of those. If it's RNA, it's going to be, you know, guanine, adenine, cytosine, but instead of thymine, it will be uracil. And so within the nucleotide, within the nucleotide, so in the nucleotide, the base always bonds to the number one tarbon, to C1. Always, 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 always. Now, remember that we talked about the uh, nucleotide having three parts. And those three parts are a phosphate group, a pento sugar, and one of the nitrogenous bases. So the last piece then, because we've got our base here, we've got our sugar here in the middle. The last piece is going to be the phosphate group. And the phosphate group bonds to C5, to the fifth carbon, right here, okay? And so in a nucleotide, the phosphate in the nucleotide, the phosphate, that phosphate functional group in a nucleotide always bonds to C5, okay? So here's your nucleotide. This is the little subunit that we put together or gets put together to make strand after strand after strand. Let me show you a quick picture here about how that would look. So you'll get an idea. So here is the picture and you can see the phosphate group here, the sugar, and then the nucleotide. And these units come together to basically form your DNA strand. This is going to end part one of this two-part video uh, um, lecture on the uh, structure of DNA.